So should you train to failure during your sets or not for muscle hypertrophy? Well, actually, this is not a black and white situation. This is not a, a, a question which has a definitive answer. And this is a debate that still goes on. And actual research into direct comparisons uh, between sets to failure or not to failure is not really sufficient at this point in time. And so I'm going to start off by saying you can do both. You, you're not incorrect. However, I also want to say that when we look at the variables for muscle hypertrophy, such as tempo, reps, sets, uh, different methods of progressive overload, such as uh, rest periods uh, between sets, etc., and we look at training to failure and not to failure, muscle growth uh, rates are uh, essentially similar. And so it's not something that you need to overly concern your mind with. And first of all, I want to uh, define what muscle failure is. It may sound simple, but actually people misunderstand. Muscle failure is not a hard set where you struggle on those last one or two reps. If you are struggling on reps but still completing them, that is not muscle failure. Training to failure is when you cannot perform that repetition, when you fail to complete that repetition. For some people, training to failure can be useful as it helps them to make sure that they are working hard enough, to make sure their intensity is at a good level, to stimulate muscle hypertrophy. And also for some people, especially the beginner trainers who struggle to program intensity, it can be useful if you're, if you're not responsible or honest enough with yourself to choose a weight which is relative to your rep range and sets in order to really challenge yourself Training to failure can be useful for you to make sure that you are working hard enough. Uh, however, this idea that muscle failure can cause injury is not correct per se. Bad form can cause injury. And, and guess what? Training to failure or not training to failure, you can injure yourself uh, in multiple ways, in multiple scenarios. Just make sure that if you are training to failure, you are able to recover enough from those sessions. And so your training frequency and, and failure will also be a factor for you to consider. Now, the disadvantage of failure can be that you neglect the repetitions prior to the failure repetition. You rush through those reps just to get to that point of failure. Again, that's counterproductive in my opinion. That old saying that every repetition counts is extremely valid. But really the point of this video is I want to communicate some information from Christian Thibado. Did I nail it that time? I'm just going to call him Tib from now on. And what he does is he associates muscle failure programming with the central nervous system. And I love that because I love to look into the nervous system when I'm looking at programming my training. Because after all, it is your nervous system which is at the heart of the response of your muscle fibers. And he has seven levels which represent how neurologically demanding exercises can be. Level one being the hardest, the most stressful on the body, the nervous system. Level seven being being the lightest. And he has a website article on the old intranet about this topic and I've linked it below and it's a very easy visual table for you to see. So you can copy and paste that or screenshot that and you absolutely can use his template if you are struggling to understand what exercises you should uh, take to failure and which ones you should not. Now again, you don't have to follow this template I want your input too. As I said, this is not black and white. You may have valuable input as to why training for failure is useful for you for certain exercises in certain scenarios. This is just one very interesting concept by a very intelligent world-class coach that I want to project to you. And so level one is complex gymnastic and Olympic lifts, for example, a snatch or a front lever. And these exercises, according to Tib, should never be taken to failure. Level two, Olympic pulls, multi-joint movements using the whole body or significant, significant axial loading. For example, deadlifts should also never be taken to failure, according to this model. Now, level three, you can take to failure occasionally, but it's not recommended by Tib. These are multi-joint movements using free weights involving half the body without significant axial loading, for example, a shoulder press. Level four and five 
Tibbs suggests going to failure on the last set of the exercise for hypertrophy. This video is about hypertrophy, not strength uh, gains. And these are multi-joint exercises on pulleys, for example, lat pull downs, and multi-joint exercises on machines, for example, a leg press. Level six and seven, the, the lesser neurologically stressor activities, and Tib recommends failure for all sets. And he also says that these are exercises which are normally trained to higher rep ranges, more volume. And so I believe this is an extremely useful, basic, digestible table that you can implement into your training. He has way more exercise examples on that web page, so please go to that. But again, again, this issue is not definitive. And even within levels on that table, I could say that different exercises could have different approaches. And Tib does discuss that. I hope this was an applicable, useful video for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.